Slide four, mija. Slide four. Okay. The Lord said to Moses, remember, people wanted uh, to talk to God and said, we are Moses, who are you? And so Moses said they want to talk to God. So, so Moses went to the Lord and the Lord told them everything that he wanted. And so the Lord came back and, and the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments and let them be ready for the third day and on the third day the lord will come down on the mount sinai and in the sight and in the sight of all the people so he said get them ready so he told me get the ladies ready prepare them prepare them when we go to our father we are not just going to anybody we are going to our Father. We are going to the Creator. We are going to the one that spoke things to being. We are going to the author and the finisher of our lives. We are going to the one that holds eternity. We are going to the one that, has, that is everything and above. That's who we are approaching. Right? Amen. Right. So the way we approach him has to be in a, in a, in a certain manner. Um, I, don't, I don't want you to start getting legalistic. I don't want you to think it's legalistic. No. But there's a way to approach Father. There's a way to approach your earthly Father. You don't approach your earthly Father. Hey, vato, ¿cómo estás? <laughs> you don't approach your, your Father like that. Hey, old man, how you doing? No. You approach your Father with respect and reverence. Because he's the one that you're here. He's the reason that you are here. Father God says, you know what Father God says in the word of God? That what, what happens in, in the Old Testament, what happened to the people that disrespected their parents? They what? They would be stoned to death. They would be stoned to death. So you don't respect, disrespect your parents. I'm losing my balance here. Okay. So, a slide, Miha? So give yourselves humbly to God. Resist the devil and he will free from you. And when you draw close to God, he says, when we, when we go to him, we're not just going to go to him. Okay, God, God. He, our God is a giving God. He, all he wants to do, he spoils us rotten. He gives us and gives us. There's nothing that we do for him that he doesn't give us anything. He gives us everything. Everything. He says, Draw near, draw close to God, and God will draw close to you. He says, wash your hands, you sinners. What does that mean? Wash your hands, you sinners, and let your hearts be filled with God alone. What, who said something? I heard a voice. What was it, Mija? Yes. Wash your hands, you sinners. In other words, when you ask for forgiveness, you're washing your hands. I love the way how the Holy Spirit speaks to my little sister. Because I bet you there's some of us that didn't know that. So wash your hands, you sinners, and let your hearts, your what? Our hearts. What is your heart? Yes. Let your hearts, your thoughts, be filled with God alone. When we go to him, our hearts, our minds have to be focused only on him. Alone to make them, to make who? The sinners and their hearts pure and true to him. Right? So how do we come pure and true to him? When we go to him, we approach him with all our hearts. You cannot just go to him. And, and, and I've heard this, and I think I've got in trouble by this before because I kind of went, went against it a little bit, that you go to your dad, oh, hi, dad. Oh, oh yeah, I always sit on my father's lap and I do this. No, no, wait, 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 wait here. Hold on here. Yes, you can do that, yes. But when we go to our father, he is, we, we have our carnal flesh still. We are still in this earth. 
we are still sinning. When we approach him, we always say, Father God, forgive me of all my sins. You always hear me praying. Like, what you hear me say is forgive me. Forgive me because I don't have that much. I'm, I don't have my thoughts controlled yet to where I'm constantly thinking righteous. No. Are you kidding me? No, I'm consciously thinking all the way. So I always have to be asking Father to forgive me. And you know what? Somebody saw? <laughs> all righty. I thought I was hearing angels. <laughs> I said, yes, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord. Okay. So, so give yourselves humbly to God. Resist. When you give yourself humbly to God, you automatically resist the devil. You resist any, resist any thought of the enemy coming to you because you're focusing on God. So, and when you draw close to God, he will what? Yes, yes. I want that. I want that. We are his righteous people. Slide. Do you know that you're his righteousness? I'm his righteousness. The right, he, the righteous, is talking about the righteous. Here, um, he was talking about the, uh, the wicked, making a character analysis of the wicked people and the righteous people. So he was saying he, the righteous, will be like a tree firmly planted uh, planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in what? Its season. Do you know that we all have seasons that we're supposed to be doing things for God? And seasons what? Change. So sometimes your walk with God is going to change. Sometimes you're going to have to change something. Sometimes you're going to have to change church. Sometimes you're going to have to change, uh, don't change honey. You keep your honey. But you're going to have to change things in your walk with God. Because you're going to go from glory to glory. You're going to be moved from a weaker to a stronger. From little revelation to greater revelation. So a tree firmly planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in Whatever he does, what happens? Again. See, he gives us blessings. You cannot outgive God. You cannot approach God and not get a blessing. Even a thought of him, he will reward you. Wake up in the morning thinking of him and let's see how your day goes. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. What type of fruit is your tree? Did you know that you were a tree? I don't have my board, my writing board. Did you know that you're a tree? You're symbolic of a tree. Okay, you are a tree. So, remember, uh, Pastor Charlie made a, 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 in his sermon, showed trees. He said, this is an apple tree, this is an orange tree. Da, 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 da. How do you know? Because there's orange hanging on the tree. How do you know? Because there's apples hanging on the tree. Well, what is this tree? And he's put up a, a, with this green leaves. If you know trees and you know about trees, you'll guess it. But if you don't know anything about trees, you'll look at it and say, well, I don't know, because I can't tell. Well, we are all trees. And your fruit tells everyone else what you're made of. Your fruit tells everyone else what you're made of, what you do. We're gonna get in, we're gonna get into a little heavy stuff, okay? And I'm gonna stay right here so you won't throw rocks at me. But um, we're gonna get into a little bit of heavy heavy stuff. So, what type of fruit is your tree? Your life, what you're producing? Could it be that oh, we don't see good fruit in our lives because we don't believe we're doing any good? Do we feel stagnant in our faith? The type of fruit tree, the type of fruit tree you are is the type of fruit you will produce. Is that understandable? I don't know if I'm getting everything in order here. Is that understandable? Scientists say, oh, and I, I, I want it. I brought something. Where's my bag? Uh, can somebody get me a knife from the kitchen? Uh, don't worry, I'm not going berserk. I'm just going to show you something. You're going to say, oh, my goodness, the nurse asking for a knife. I'll show you something. 
Man is very smart and has a lot of intelligence. And scientists, they figure everything out, right? They figure everything out. Just one knife. If you want to, uh, t the tissue, the tissue, yeah. And I wasn't crazy because I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get an apple and I don't want to. I don't want to, thank you, mija. I don't want to uh, throw a, a good apple away, so I got the rottenest one that I had. <laughs> You're not going to eat it. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Oh. I don't want to cut myself. <laughs> oh, thank you, mama. Hold, yeah. There we go. Well. <laughs> All righty. Let me get these babies out for you. I tell you, how many, how many men does it take to put a light bulb on? Okay. Boy, this one has a lot, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm. Right, well, I cut these in half. But you cut them in half? No, yeah, when I cut the apple, they... they oh, yeah, no, no. You're going to cut yeah. it again or not? No, I don't think so, because I don't think there's any more in there. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, there's one more in there. Yeah, there it is. All right, and let's see, I think there's one more in here. Ah, there it is. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you. So, I cut this apple in half, and I, and I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seeds out of it. I got seven seeds out of the apple. Okay, scientists say that there are about 5 to 13 seeds in one apple. Well, I've got seven seeds here, so that's more than five. Man may know how many seeds there are in an apple, but only God knows how many apples are there in a seed. You understand what I'm saying? Because I, I wish I had my board here. I was going to, you, you know me how it take too long. Hmm? That uh, um, man knows how many seeds there are in an apple, but only God knows how many apples are there in a tree. Okay, if you get one seed, an apple seed, you get one little seed, and you plant it, put the dirt, you plant it, that comes out and it becomes a tree, and that tree gives a lot of apples. Well, the scientists don't know how many apples this seed is going to give. God does. Uh, understand that? Not only God knows how many apples that tree is going to give, God knows how many orchards that tree can give. Because he is God. God knows what's in your heart. He knows your tree. He knows what gifts he's put in you. He knows what seeds he's put in you. He knows what you can do. He knows how many lives you can touch. He knows what your gifts. We honor ladies today that use their gifts in the church. And what do they do? They bless us. We should tell them once in a while, Roberta, awesome job. Cindy, awesome job. Mika, you helped me out so much. Wera, you do so good. Uh, all of you that come, when we used to bring dinner or not bring dinner, just coming is a blessing. All of us have gifts. All of us have seeds. We are a tree. But in order for the tree to give good fruit, it has to be planted. What did it say? That, that it be firmly planted by the streams of water. What? do we call the Bible sometimes? Living water. Living water. Plant your tree on living water. Where did my Bible go? Oh, I have it in there. Get it for me, Mika. Oh, I have it in the other part where I disciple. Uh, plant your tree on, on the living word of God. In other words, when you're planted by the waters, slide, Look at this tree. It's planted. Look at the very top. It has a little green where it once was alive. It once was green. 
It once was useful. It once gave shade. But it got sick. And it's dying. It's not near water. Slide. Look at this one. This is the way I felt when I was sick. Dried and brittle. Not producing one bud. Not one leaf. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely zero. No water. Dried up. No water. Ladies, one thing I found out. Six weeks I didn't come to church, and that's the condition I felt. And I'm still feeling a little bit. You have, there's a reason why Father God says, congregate. There's a reason why Father God says, come together with your brothers and your sisters so that I can forgive your sins, and that's in John. Do you know that by fellowshipping with one another, he forgives our sins? We can't be like that. We can't be like that at all. Or do we feel slight? Do we feel old and already kind of, I'm too tired. I can't do this anymore. What can I do for you, Lord? Look at me. I'm all bent over already. Are you hearing me? Where's the water? There's no water. When we pull away from each other, you are in danger zone. Because I don't care how much TV you watch. I was watching all kinds of Christian programs. But I was not near living souls. I was watching a program that is coming through a TV where I cannot feel the spirit. I have to be around life. We have to be around life where we touch and we hug. Do you hear what I'm saying? Don't let the enemy tell you, don't go to church. Nobody cares. Nobody cares if you're there or not. Nobody cares. Why go to church? That's a lie from hell itself. What does Satan want to do? Who does Satan hate with all its being? The human race. He hates for brethren to get together because we strengthen each other up. He doesn't want us to get together. He wants our tree to be like that. The way a tree feels or is inside is seen in what it produces on the outside. Amen? Amen. Thank you. What's that sound? <sighs> See, I hear it coming from up there somewhere. Oh, okay. All right, already. I always have to do this. Okay. It's real quiet in here. I'm not sorry, though. Because he wants us to know. He wants us to know. Slide. Remember, he the righteous will be like a tree firmly planted in the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. When you are with one another, when I was sick, your prayers sustain me. I had my coffee, uh, my coffee table full of get well and get better and encouraging cards. I had plants where they would bring me plants, you know, and, and, and I had texts. How are you doing? How are you doing, Mom? How are, you know, how we're praying for you. All that, all that was water to that dry, dry tree. I had meals coming. I mean, I, I mean, Mayo cooks. He cooks. Well, yeah, he does. <laughs> he cooks. But I had meals would come in. 
you know, and, and it, it, was, uh, it was humbling, but it was beautiful, teaching me, because I'm very much a lonely person. I'm very much an alone person, teaching me, you can't. You can't be. You need one another. You need one another. Be careful who you associate with. You are a living vessel, a bright, shining light that reflects his character. If you are a godly person hanging around with someone that has one foot in the world and one foot in the, stay away. Because I'm going to tell you something. A good 95%, they're going to draw you out before you can draw them in. What does he say? For those that mock him, don't even give them any attention. Because when a person is living in the world and saying, well, it doesn't say in the Bible to this and that. No, you know better. Your spirit inside speaks to you. Your spirit inside, if you're growing in the Lord and you mean business with him, your spirit inside is going to say, uh-uh-uh. No, I'm sorry. I love you. And I will talk to you, and I will encourage you, but I'm not going to yoke myself with you. Because we're in the last days. We need to be like the ten virgins and start getting our oil in. We don't have time to share. I'm going to teach you in the vir ten virgins one day. Just write it down so I won't forget. Uh, where was I? Okay. Now... Um, slide. Look at this tree. Look at where it's planted. Look at the fruit. Packed with fruit. Wow. Slide. Look at the fruit. I want to be like that. I want to be a tree where someone can just get fruit from me. Just like a sponge. Give them water. That's what I want to be. I want my branches to be full of fruit. I want to walk around and always coming out of my mouth is the word of God. I want wherever I go for them to see love in me. I want that. Slide. Look at that. Look at how many apples are in that one branch. Yikes. How many seeds are there? Wow. I want to be a tree, a living tree planted in the word of God so I can walk around like Jesus did, doing good works with my brothers and my sisters. Doing good deeds. I want that. Don't you? I want that. So, what has your life produced? Has it even produced? What exactly is that what produces fruit? What is it? What produces that apple? Is it the branch? Is it even a lot of the water? Guess what it is? Guess. Anybody? The sap. The sap and the pollination. If a tree is pollinated well, it will produce good fruit. If the sap is healthy, it will produce good fruit. Now, let's go. When you are producing good food, fruit and we're walking and displaying God's character, what the people are seeing is your attitude. Did you know that? Your attitude. How is your attitude? How is your attitude? I say, man, I'm anxious to go to I'm anxious to go to Tuesdays because I love to be around my sisters. That's a good attitude. You got the Holy Spirit in you. Sap is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. What is your attitude? Let's go to where. It talks about attitudes. We're going to go there. Uh, slide 15. I want to show you something. When we go to the Sermon of the Mount, very famous sermon, it's talking about beatitudes. 
The Beatitudes are blessing. But I said, okay, Lord, I know that. Yeah, I, I looked it up, and it means blessing. And I said, okay, Lord, but what, what are you showing me here? And he says, I want you to go in a little bit deeper, mija. I have to explain things a certain way for you, for me to understand. And when I explain it to you, I want you to share it. Okay. So I said, look up B. So I looked up B. And it means to exist, present. And then attitude, it means a mental position or feeling with regard to a fact or state. What is your attitude in regard to the fact? That you are a Christ-like child. What is your attitude to the fact that you are to display God's glory? What is your attitude with the feeling that you surrender your love to the Father? What is your attitude? It's a mental position. It's a mental position. It's what you believe. Be attitudes. So I looked at it and I said, oh, be those blessings are the attitudes. And we're going to study when we come back from the retreat, we're going to study the beatitudes. Those blessings, the beatitudes are the attitudes that a Christian should exhibit in their lives. Okay. Did you get it? All right. All right. Slide. Let's go to Matthew 5, 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So I saw that, and I said, wait a minute. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Poor. Um, as far as I know... From what I am reading, Jesus is saying that if you are poor in spirit, you are blessed. And the kingdom of heaven is yours. And I want that. But what does poor in spirit mean? Because it seems to me that we are to strive to be rich in spirit, not poor. In Matthew 6, seven, slide 17, we have. Next slide. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven for Neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So that's telling me, hey, treasures, rich, you know. So which is it? What it is is spiritual poverty. That is what we should seek. We come to him humbly. Yes, yes, we do. But how do we do that? I'm explaining the gospel. By coming to the Father emptied and unloaded. We must recognize that we are sinners. We are broken vessels and unload everything, and I mean everything. The past, the present, anything that would hold us back in our walk with God, in our relationship with him. We must be emptied out and unloaded so that we can receive and be filled with him. We cannot bring our past and hold on to our past. Because when we hold on to the past, how are we going to move forward if we're living in the past? You can't move forward and drag the past with you. You can't move forward and do the things he wants you to do if you're still hanging on dear life to the past. But whoa, he hurt me. But whoa, when he divorced me, he did this to me. But whoa, she hurt me. But wait a minute. you got to unload all that. Unload it. Empty yourself when you approach him. 
You understand what I'm saying? Too quiet. Coming to grip that our spirits are severely lacking and are deep, are in, in deep, deep need of him. It is not doing or being what we want to do or be, self-centered, thinking we already know and we understand everything. We already heard of all this before, proud and in control, being self-satisfied or proud in our hearts, thinking that we don't really need God. If we are, God cannot bless us. James 4, 6 says, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. But rather unloading everything and being emptied of self, completely emptied, giving up everything. And that's one thing I'm going to train and hope that through the Holy Spirit, we will learn how to empty ourselves. We have to learn how to empty ourselves because we don't know how to do that. We say, yes, Lord, I give it to you. And we go home and guess what? They're still there. Right? I know. I've done it. Let me give you an example. Oh, oh hold on. Um, unloading everything is being poor in spirit. When we are emptied of ourselves, then we can receive the new blessings of our Father God. Is that understandable? Of course, there's room. Let me give you an example. The Pharisees who were experts in the law of God and in the Old Testament rejected Jesus who brought in the New Testament. Slide. Let me show you something. In John 1, 17, 18, for Moses gave us only the law with its rigid demands and merci merciless justice, while Jesus Christ brought us loving forgiveness as well. Do you remember? Uh, before Jesus came, the Pharisees, they are experts at the law, uh, the law of Moses and Abraham. Experts, experts. There was nothing that they didn't know. They were the chief leaders, the spiritual leaders of Israel. They, they had, I mean, of, of God's people, they had, they knew everything. No one has ever actually seen God, but of course his only son has, for he is the companion of the Father and has told us all about him. So when Jesus came, hey, who knew about the Father? Jesus. How come he knew? He's his son. Why do we believe him? Because he knows him personally. But the Jews did not believe. They were so caught up in the old. They were so caught up in the past. They were so caught up. They didn't want to let go of the traditions. They didn't want to let go of the religions to see that a new chapter had come in, a new testament, not the Old Testament, but a new contract. They didn't want to believe that. And to this day, they don't believe it. And they've rejected the Son of God. We don't want to hear, well, well, you know what? I do want to go to church, but you know what? I got too many things to do. I'm too busy. I, I, I can't. That's fine. And if that, that's fine, you go ahead and do it. Because it's been taught to you. It's been told you. It's your choice. He doesn't want you by force. He doesn't want to force you to go come or go or do anything for him. If you do anything for him, even something as simple as to come and just listen. It's, in, it's, your, it's your choice, and he will honor you for that. <clears throat> what slide is that, Miha? 18. In the Old Testament, Father dealt with his people, but when Father God moved on, he sent himself incarnated in his son Jesus to bring the New Testament. But the Pharisees were so filled and loaded with the old and the past that it didn't allow the, their hearts to receive the new, the fresh, the grace, and the life. Not only the bad things hold us back, but our walk with our Father sometimes, what we think is good, can also hold us back. 
let's learn a lesson from the Pharisees. The Pharisees hearing from God through the prophet. When Jesus came, they did not believe. They did not receive because they were living in the old ways. We too, at one time or other, we have heard from the Father. Remember, I remember. When you first accepted Christ, how excited you were. And then you start going to some functions. Oh, for someone that's never been a Christian, seeing all these ladies together worshiping the Lord and doing all that, it was awesome. It was a new experience. It was a fresh experience. It was an awesome experience. And you know what? That's what we're seeking. We still want that experience. We don't want to mature and move forward to new experiences because we still are here. I want that experience. You already gave it to you. You already had it. Move forward. Right? Move forward. Stop looking at what you had back then. Move forward. There's plenty beautiful experience that you need to have still. To lay on the, the hands on the sick and be healed. To cast out devils. To make the blind to see. These signs shall follow them that believe. Why are we not getting those experiences? Because we are looking for this experience. Do you understand what I'm saying? We can't do that. It seems good to us is go, well, I'm, I'm looking for that. Oh, I'm looking for that. I remember. Oh, I remember we used to sing awesome songs. Oh, I, wait, wait, wait. When we worship him, we worship him in truth and in spirit. If you worship him at home and you're worshiping him in truth. I was there before I came in here. I was there in the office and I was worshiping him in song in my holy language. I sing to him a lot in my holy language. And when I came here, I was ready. The experiences was new, how exciting, or attended a function of where we ministered, we were ministered to. It supplied us for a while. Well, time has passed, and you have been searching for that exciting experience, but can't find it. Could it be that we are still in the past trying to eat of the same meal rather than to live today a fresh new day and eat a new meal? Slide. Let's hear what Paul has to say. No, dear brothers, he's saying, I am still not all I should be. This is Paul. This is Paul talking. And this is me talking. I am not what I should be. But I am looking for this experience, and I'm not going to look for that experience no more. I want new experiences. I want new things. My father is not a God that brings stale bread. He doesn't give stale bread. He gives fresh bread, daily bread. You want new things? You wake up in the morning and say, Father God, this is the day you've given me. I will rejoice in it. Give me the opportunities. Let me walk with new experiences. How much of him do you want? You're only going to give what you put in. That's all. You're only going to get what you put in. If you feel dry like the tree, like I did, if you feel dry, then you're just putting in a little. The days are coming where... The days are coming, sisters, if you're not, we're not strong, we're going to be taken over. We're, we're not strong. He says, no, dear brothers, I am still not at all, not all I should be, but I am bringing all my what? Energies. I am bringing all my energies. In other words, I am doing what needs to be done. I am doing what it takes. I am bringing all my energy to bear on this one thing. What is the thing? Forgetting the past and looking forward to what 
lies ahead. I strain to reach. I strain to reach the end of the race. He says, I strain to do that. My goodness, if, we, if, if we're sitting down and the phone rings and someone needs counseling, oh, my God. He says, I strain. Ah. Wow. To reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God is calling us up to heaven because of what Christ Jesus did for us. Wow. Wow. Let's go forward every day a new day. Ex new experience focusing on our emptiness, filling it with his blessing. Blessed be the poor in spirit. Did you get anything tonight? That's what he spoke to me with just that little verse. He awoken me. He awoken me. And he said, you're going, you're searching in the wrong place. Move ahead. Tell the ladies you're going to move ahead. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Don't listen to his lies. Don't feel that, well, like I said before, well, you know, uh-uh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Because you know why? That's the enemy inside you not wanting to you to prosper. The enemy in not wanting you to prosper spiritually so that you could be weak like those trees, so that you don't get watered. When you don't get watered, you're going to die inside. When the tree doesn't get water, it starts dying from the inside. From the inside. And before you're knowing, guess what? Your fruit is going to be, your fruit is your attitude. What is your attitude going to be? Ah, I don't care. I don't care. Lukewarm. This is a warning. Set in grace, set in love. We must receive what he's telling us. Isn't this awesome? When we go, or either we stay at home or we go to the retreat, on the re to next week I'm going to teach him something else that pertaining to what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to teach him prayer. And it's different than most of, of the time that I, that I teach. But we're going to meet him. I want to meet him. I meet him here. We have him here. He dwells in our spirit. I understand that. But what happens? I wish one of you would have been in there, or all of you would have been in there just today when I was praying. That was exciting. It was awesome. I was fortified. I was strengthened in my flesh, not so much in my spirit, and that's where it comes. Because then when I'm strengthened in my spirit, my attitude changes. And guess what? Is my attitude is what I give you to drink. My attitude is what I give you to eat. If my attitude stinks, you're going to go, mm -hmm, because why? You're smelling that attitude. Right? So the attitude that we have, that attitude is your fruit of your tree because your attitude says how you feel inside. If you're dry inside, you're going to behave that way. We can fake it, but it isn't true. It'll come out. It'll come out in a, in, in a little frustration. A little, it'll come out. It can't stay hidden. It can't stay hidden. He said, bless it. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the ones that have opened up their heart and emptied it out and just want me to fill them. Those are the ones that are going to be blessed. The ones that are willing to leave behind everything like the disciples did and follow him. Those are blessed are the poor in spirit. Yes, it's humbling, but it's also opening and unloading and emptying yourself. 
So I want you to practice doing that. When you pray, empty yourself. When you pray, you give him everything. When you pray at home and you sing at home, you empty yourself. Whatever it is, Father, I can't work this out. I'm trying to, but with you, I can do it. Show me, guide me, lead me. Do it. I'm emptying myself. I'm being totally 100% honest. I'm emptying myself to you. I don't want to live in the past. I don't want to look in the past. I want to move forward in you. My goodness, he has so many blessings. Why don't we want to get them? Wow. Isn't that awesome? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Any questions? Good, good. Did we receive? Was I not all over the place? Oh, thank you, Lord. Well, amen. Heavenly Father, I give you the glory and the honor, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for making your presence once again. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Don't let our ears hear and not receive because our hearts will get colder and harder. And woe when you break it. But let us be broken so your light could shine through us. Let us be broken vessels before you, my Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, thank you for your love. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for making the way where there was no way. Only you, only you could have done that. I thank you, my sir. In Jesus' name we pray, we all say amen and amen.